Good evening. Good evening. And Good evening. welcome to this Remembrance and Healing Service. We want to thank you for joining us tonight, and because tonight we remember and we mourn the 49 people who were so unjustly, so brutally murdered in Orlando last week. We're filled with sadness for the unfulfilled promises of so many lives. We're filled with sadness because we can't even begin to imagine what they might have achieved and learned, how they might have, through their efforts, created a better world for all of us. Even though we mourn, at the same time we rejoice because we know that life is eternal. They are, at this very moment, experiencing a fuller, a freer, more beautiful, and more joyful experience than we can even imagine. They are all safe now in the loving presence of God. Right now, we hold in God's healing light all the families and the friends who are experiencing such sadness and such pain this very night. As they turn to him, as they trust in God, he will begin healing those deep wounds, easing the sense of loss, and will fill their hearts gradually with peace. Our unseen but heart-filled prayers support them all this month, this night, and the loving presence of God, the healing power of this omnipresent God is loving them and healing them as well. So let's all stand as we are able, and we will sing hymn number nine, Let There Be Love on Earth, hymn number nine. which flows through all life. Spirit is the source of life which beats at the heart of the universe. Let us remember that every person is a spark of the divine, the mystery of life and love, wanting to be lived as each one of us. We are all united in one common humanity and one common love. 
Let us remember that those who have died, suffered, and been wounded, for they are children of God. Each is an infinitely precious child of life, and we know that God is wrapping loving arms, caring hearts, and a peaceful presence around each and every one. Let us remember those that grieve over the losses they have suffered. We stand in loving, compassionate prayer that comfort and love may bring forth the presence of peace in their lives. Let us remember that hate and anger only fuel the cycle of fear and violence. Today we turn to the loving, compassionate presence of God to pray for the light to come to those who are filled with such fear and anger that they would be motivated to such an act. They, too, are children of God. Let us remember to refuse to be a place where fear or anger or hate can find a home. We stand in the truth that we are one people, one world, one humanity, and that love truly is the only answer. Let us remember that life is precious, that each moment is an opportunity to love, and each breath a blessing from spirit. Let us remember today that love is the answer and peace is the way. Sometimes as we go about our daily lives or we hear news of things that happen, we sort of trip to our more human side and, and we get tangled up and when we stop and remember that is the God dwelling in, inside of each one of us individually and collectively, if that's where we go, that's where our healing is found. And that's what this song is about. Hold on.
adjust a little. <coughs> it warms my heart to be able to look out and see my church family here together. And a hearty welcome to all those who are new or visiting with us for this remembrance time. I do want to say namaste to everyone. The Christ in me reaches out this evening and uh, to the Christ in you. And I would like to say that we not only greet the divine in each other, but we see the Father that is in the Son, for we know that God is all. I know that we're sad today, we're sad this week, yet I know that we are brave enough to embrace our mourning. And we may not understand this tragedy, or how this could happen, or how our aching heart will reach out for people that we do not yet know and have not met. So I encourage you this time to embrace your own, to reach out and touch those of us who are here. Love them, cling to them. And we stand full in the knowledge that we are all one. We must let love free us. It gives us strength and it gives us courage. Love brings us back into that divine balance where all is right and all is good. We invite the love of God to flow through us and blessing us all. I urge you again, let this love free you. Healing is turning from the darkness to the light of God's presence. And there is nothing incurable in that light. No matter how dark the picture or how difficult the circumstances or how tragic the world condition, the power of God is always great enough to dissolve the darkness. The power of God is always great enough to free us. Sometimes when we look out into the confusion of this world, things may seem hopeless. But remember, God's love is eternal, and God's power never ceases. It's not easy to live in this world sometimes. Unless we take that power and love of God so closely into our own communion that we touch everyone around us with it. There was a woman who once said to a man named James Freeman, who was writing a series of uplifting prayers for soldiers. Um, and he began that writing with the 23rd Psalm. She said to him, quite frankly, if I'm ever faced with a gunman, I don't want to feel like I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Can't you give me something better? How can I give you something better than that, he said. But he wrote something in response. He wrote the following prayer. And these words cut through the darkness with the light of truth. My hope is that each child of God knew these words in their hearts that night, even as the shots rang out. If you will, say them with me. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God always watches over me. The mind of God guides me. The mind of God guides me. The life of God flows through me. The life of God flows through me. The laws of God direct me. The laws of God direct me. The peace of God abides in me. The peace of God abides in me. The joy of God uplifts me. The joy of God uplifts me. The strength of God renews me. The strength of God renews me. The beauty of God inspires me. The beauty of God inspires me. Wherever I am, God is. Wherever I am, God is. And all is well. And all is well. Now I know that each one of them knew and experienced the presence of God in their final earthly moments. That comforts me. And for wherever we are, God always is. And in the words of man, even those spoken here today, God's voice will be heard. Amen. 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 We would like to take a moment, if there's anyone here tonight, who would like to say something.
if you have something you would like to to say to the group or someone to be remembered, it's your chance to share. <coughs> I don't mind waiting for a moment. Mike is yours. <laughs> I think um, the thing that hit me the hardest was that I was in back street the night of the shooting there. And this brought back a lot of memories from that, but I think the thing that, that really got me was um, after the shooting at back street, we all stood with each other and we held hands and we prayed and we held hands with families and friends and strangers and we even held hands with people we thought we didn't like. And after it was all over and we let let go and stopped holding hands, we never went back and took each other's hands again. And then 9-11 happened and we all got together. And we held hands, and we prayed with strangers, and we did the same thing all over again. And when we let go, we just walked away and let go. And here we are again. And this time I would ask, I would beg, that you don't let go this time. Once we hold hands this time, don't let go. Don't stop. Because if we keep letting go of each other's hands, this is going to keep happening. So until we stand together and we're in solidarity and we love each other every day, not just when tragedies happen, we're going to keep coming back here. And as much as I love you all, I don't want this to be the only time that I get to hold your hand and be with you and pray with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to say a word? <laughs> we don't mind the way you yeah, ready. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> In all honesty, I'm not really sure what to say, but um, when you brought up the 23rd Psalm, um, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death is just a shadow. We see it as a shadow because it seems strange and unknown, but I believe that we are all amazingly connected to those souls that have passed, probably now in a way that we would not have been had they still been alive because we've become aware of them. And we've become aware of our connection to them in spirit and in God. And I think we need to pray for ourselves as well as praying for them, praying for their families, praying for understanding, and I think you said it well, this isn't going to make sense. And so many of us like for things to make sense. It's really nice if it fits really neatly and the points connect and then it'll make sense. But this will never really make sense. And there's not any one thing that, that caused this to happen. But we can still all share that love, as you've all been talking about, and support one another, whether we're going through a hard time or not. And uh, we will hold you all in our prayers, and we ask you to do the same. And we always hold you in light and love. And it's always an honor to be here with you, and we thank you for having us. But know that you stay in our prayers, whether there is something going on in the world or not. And we care about you very much. We love you. Yeah, this is a part of our act, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I just want to say that um, uh, there's a lot of people we've talked to in the last week that are very scared. Very scared that you can be out somewhere and just be having, just be dancing and, and, and something can happen. And it's just very scared. I would ask for your prayers for those people who are, are, are just trembling inside. Um, having the cats we we've got it's, it's just just horrible and they're young and and, and they're the same age as a, as a lot of the kids you know 20s 20s uh, the same age 
And um, so if you could pray for them, I appreciate it. To my friends in the LGBT community, this seems like it was directed as a hate crime to that specific group of people. But you're wrong. It's really not. It's directed at all of us. You see, we all love the same way, with the same heart. And we all cry the same tears, and they taste the same. So this was not a crime against just the gay community. It was a crime against all of us. Because we are all one, and that's who we are. We are all one. Jesus said to love thy enemies though they abuse you and even though there were 49 victims the young man who shot everyone is also someone him and his family needs to be prayed for also yes. because they um, they're hurting and they're in pain also and their son is also dead um, and we may never know what drove him to do such a thing I mean, people can speculate. Um, the media will turn it all upside down, and we may not ever know why. But he was definitely a suffering human being that he would take 50 lives, 49 lives. So we must not forget him and his family also. Therefore, we have 50 candles that will be lighted yes, aside. We do. Is there anyone else who would like to share at this time? Okay. We will now be singing. We are marching in the light of God. Um, the words will be on the projector for you. So please rise as you're able and join us.
can go deeply within yourself. For in this place within us, this place of peace within us, we truly are all one. And in this oneness, we reach out, not only to the people who are in this room, but to all those who are fearful, who suffer, who mourn, who are in pain, those who are in the hospital in Orlando, relatives, friends, and anyone, anywhere, who is taking this dreadful incident into their minds repeatedly and with sadness, perhaps with fear and with pain. And let us do the wisest thing that we can possibly do. And that is to begin the forgiveness process. For as we release that horribly misguided man who did this heinous thing, we too are freed. We allow peace to take up residence in our hearts. Peace and the understanding that this man is, as was said, a child of God who was overwhelmingly misguided, who caused great sadness, harm, grief, pain to others. But God is pouring out his love, pouring out his understanding, his healing power, his forgiveness, his overwhelming joy and goodness on each and all of us in this oneness. As we take in a third deep cleansing breath and we release it we recognize that behind the most dreadful things, God is yet and always at work. And somehow, through this terrible episode, good will emerge. There will be blessings there will be healings, there will be understandings, there will be the rising above the appearance to know that oneness, to know that with God all things are in divine order. And this night we give thanks for that. We rejoice in the learning the blessing, the growth, mentally and spiritually, that will fill the minds and hearts of all those who are concerned. And for his blessing on each and all, for his unconditional love, for each and all, we give deepest thanks. Amen.
Like every, any other evening in the club halls, people were winding down from the, an evening of dancing, drinking, socializing. They were making plans for the day or days to come. Plans with friends and family. They were bringing harm to no one. They believed they were in a safe haven. Then tragedy struck and their world along with many others near and far would never be the same. I want to stand up here tonight and promise you that all of you are safe, that senseless shootings will never happen again, that hatred does not exist, but this is a false promise. What I can promise is that each and every one of you in the sanctuary this evening is loved and accepted for who you are. Each of us is a unique, individualized expression of God. God's light shines here tonight upon all, us all. Please look around at the people gathered amongst us here tonight. As individuals, we feel the pain and sadness from the Orlando shootings. But as a group united, we shall begin to heal and must feel the love we have for one another. And now I'd like you to repeat after me the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And just remember the ones that were lost in Orlando.
in the mind, in the heart, in the activity of God, whether we walk in a physical body or in a spiritual one. And this day, we send blessings, we send prayers, we send light, we send love to all those who fear, who suffer, those who have gone through that doorway called death, and those who remain. All, each, are blessed. For God loves each and all, and we are each and all his children. For this blessing, for knowing that good will come forth from this dreadful deed, these awful moments, we give deepest thanks. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> Are you feeling better? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.